speak at faint not. You know, sometimes in, in life, we can get discouraged, we can, we can quit. And he gave us some reasons that we need to just keep on for the Lord. In chapter 4, verse 1, he says, one, because we have, we have this ministry. You know, there's an important work that God has called us to do. Uh, as well, in verse 7, he said, we need to keep on because we have this treasure. Now, he says it's in earthen vessels. Uh, he's, in verse 7, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Uh, we keep on because we, uh, we have God himself, God's Holy Spirit, and God's uh, the treasures that, that God has given to us uh, in, in our lives. And it's important that we, uh, uh, we give uh, full measure of what God has given us. In verse 13, he said, we keep on because we have the same spirit of faith. The same faith that Jesus had, the same Holy Spirit that Jesus had, uh, we, can, we can serve the Lord. We don't have to, to faint. And, and in a sense, chapter 5 continues on with this thought in that we don't faint because we can have a confidence of heaven. You know, we don't have to give up because this, this life is not all there is. And let's read there in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. we just stop reading there. These are not easy verses, so bear with me tonight as, as we look at some of these, but the, uh, the message itself is really quite simple. Uh, confidence of heaven, uh, knowing that no matter what we go through in this life, one, it won't be that long, and two, it's, it's not our goal. This life is not all there is. Uh, we can have confidence of heaven. We're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And that house that he's talking about, uh, he's talking about our, our body and our, our heavenly body. Um, we can, like the song says, we can understand it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Uh, we don't need to faint. We need to serve the Lord. And he talks in the first few verses about our groaning. Now, some of you understand this better than others. Uh, sometimes there, there's just... Man, sometimes life can just be tough, you know. Just getting out of bed sometimes. Oh, you know, you groan. Up the steps, you groan. Uh, situations, we groan. But what he's saying here, in one sense, is we need to be careful that we're not just groaning about the troubles, that we're looking forward to what God has for us. You know, there's a difference in groaning to be out of trouble and groaning to be with the Lord. Um, in verse 4, he says, not that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon. Now, let me give you an illustration that, that I think pictures the difference here. Uh, this lovely young woman is going to be married. Now, there's going to be a big difference if she's excited about being married because she loves this man who's asked her to marry her and she's excited about being married to him, or if she's wanting to get married because she wants to get out of this terrible family that she's in and just, just can't wait to be shed of, of her parents. Let me tell you, there's a big difference. And in our life, we need to be careful that we're not just looking around and saying, oh, I'm tired of this, and oh, I'm tired of that, and groaning about this and that. We just need to be excited about being in heaven uh, more than we're worried about being, being here. Uh, be careful. Uh, some people groan because they don't have enough of the world. You ever done that? <laughs> oh, you know, I'm serving the Lord, and that guy who doesn't serve the Lord, he's got a nice house, and he's got good health, and 
You know, we can groan for the wrong reasons. In 1 John, he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We don't want to groan because we want more of the world. And we really don't want to have just a negative attitude, just groaning because there's trouble. But we do need to be excited. And, and part of what should motivate us is we're on our way to heaven. We have a time here. Uh, we need to look forward uh, to heaven and serve the Lord while we're here. Jesus said in Matthew 6, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Let me tell you, there's no work days in heaven. <laughs> oh, the mansion's breaking down. No. <laughs> for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I think that's what he's trying to get across here. Uh, in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. And he's given us an earnest, he says in verse 5. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. And earnest is a deposit. It's a pledge of something to come. And the Holy Spirit is God's earnest, God's pledge. In Ephesians, he says, After that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of His glory. That's the kind of attitude we need to have. God has given us His promise. God has given us His Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Spirit of promise. And whatever we're going through, we have God's promise that we're headed for heaven. And we can be excited about that. Uh, what God is doing now is just a taste uh, of eternity. Uh, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and, and verse 9, he said, As it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. God can can help you. Things that people can't understand by human logic. Uh, things that science can't figure out. God's Holy Spirit can help you. God's, hel God's Holy Spirit can help you when life is tough uh, to get through it. Uh, to see that heaven is our home. And uh, you know what uh, the, the problem is many times we turn to the world for solutions where only God has the answer. Uh, we can have a confidence of heaven. Let me ask you this evening, where's your confidence? Yeah, when you're really in trouble, where do you turn? Well, if it's not God through His Holy Spirit, uh, your confidence is in the wrong place. Uh, you need to be confident of heaven. If you're confident of heaven, you'll serve Him. Really. Verse 9 there. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Uh, you know, when, when you know that you're on your way to heaven, you, uh, you just... We'll have the attitude, well, I, I better serve the Lord while I'm here. In Philippians, he said, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We can have confidence in our Lord. If you're not confident of heaven, I can guarantee it, you're not going to serve him. Now, now, the only possible exception of that <laughs> are religions that teach you get to heaven by works. But you're still not going to be confident of heaven. <laughs> You know, you're going to work and, oh, I hope I've done enough works. How much works do you have to do to get to heaven? Well, God says there's, there's no amount that will get you to heaven. As Christians, uh, we need to be confident of heaven. We need to be trusting the Lord. That's called living by faith. You know, reading God's word and, and believing what he, what he says. Uh, we don't have to doubt. You know, the Thessalonians, the Bible says they, they had been deceived into thinking that the Lord had already come again. Did you ever read that in 2 Thessalonians uh, Two, he says, um, says that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of the Lord, uh, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Yeah, they've been deceived into thinking, oh, Jesus has already come, too late. <laughs> and so, of course, you know, they had no confidence. But that wasn't by the word of the Lord. That wasn't by faith. That was by foolishness. And we need to be careful that our confidence is in the Lord. You know, Paul was able to say, I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. In uh, 2 Timothy, he was able to say, 
You know, I've finished my course. I've, I've kept the faith. I've fought the fight. You know, he was able to say, I've, I'm headed for that reward that, that the Lord Jesus has for me. His eye was on the goal, and it was heaven. And because of that, he didn't faint. And he was motivated to, to serve the Lord. Uh, the second thing, not only a confidence of heaven, but there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we can be motivated by the fact that we're, we're going to give an account to the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, let me start reading in verse 9. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. I'll just stop reading there for the moment. Uh, the second motivation here for serving the Lord and for not fainting is, you, the, the old-fashioned term is the fear of the Lord. Uh, we need to have a, a fear of the Lord. The Bible talks here about laboring to please Him. Did you notice there in verse 9, he uses the term, uh, we may be accepted of him. A-C-C-E-P-T-E-D. Uh, that, that word means well-pleasing. Our goal is, is to please the Lord. And really that should be our, our constant theme. That we just want to please him. We should be growing in that. In 1 Thessalonians he said uh, that he exhorted them by the Lord Jesus that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God so you would abound more and more. Now, that should be more and more our, our cause, is to please the Lord. You know, when you first get saved, uh, there's a certain initial flush of, you know, loving the Lord and wanting to please the Lord. Um, but then sometimes as Christians, we get used, used to things. We're singing some of these songs tonight. I thought, it isn't amazing the, the wonderful things God has done for us that we just kind of begin to take for granted, that God would become a man and die on the cross for us. So I saw that picture of Jesus. You know, the Bible says that, I can't remember the exact phrasing he uses in Isaiah, but basically is that on the cross, you wouldn't have even recognized that he was a man. He, he, was, he, he was just so mangled and, and beat up. You know, we see these lovely little pictures of, you know, a little nice little piece of cloth and, you know, maybe a little bit of blood here and there. And he was so beat up on the cross that... You had had trouble knowing whether that was a man or what, what that was up on the cross. Uh, he suffered for us. But, uh, uh, we need to understand uh, the, the things of God are, are precious. And as we grow in Him, we should, we should want to please Him more. We should want to please the Lord. Um, the Bible says that we're going to give an account. There in verse 10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You know, even as Christians... We're not going to give an account as to whether we're saved or not. But we are going to give an account of what we've done. And, uh, you know, in 1 Corinthians 3, for instance, he talks about how that uh, every man's work um, is going to be tried. Wood, hay, stubble, what's the other? Gold, um, silver, precious stones. Uh, some will abide, some won't. He said, every, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, yet he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. By fire. And we're going to give an account of our lives. And then he goes on in, in verse 11 and saying, says, saying, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. If as Christians we're going to be judged, what's it going to be like for the lost? You know, they're not going to be judged just for rewards. They're going to be judged and, and sent to hell. And we need to understand that. Uh, that's why he says there in verse 11, uh, we persuade men. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. If God's going to judge us, what about them? Our conscience could, should cause us uh, to serve the Lord. In Hebrews, he talks about purging our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You know, a lot of times we do little things to kind of salve our conscience, uh, but we need to, to be motivated by pleasing the Lord. What, is, what does Jesus really want us to do? You know, we're motivated by confidence of heaven. 
We sing the song, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Uh, th that's a motivation. You know, heaven is our home. And we're also motivated by the fear of the Lord. We're going to give an account. And then we're, we're motivated as well by Christ's love for us. Look at in verse 14. He says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's a very familiar verse, isn't it? We don't always remember the context. Verse 14 uses the phrase, The love of Christ constraineth us. That word constrain means to tie or bind together. And the, the thrust of it is that His love ties us to Him. Now, it also ties us together as, as Christians, but the, the primary meaning there is it's His love that ties us to Him. And you know, what a, what a blessing that is uh, that we can see that our Christian life is not dependent on our strength. It's not dependent on our consistency or our love. Uh, we're saved by the Savior. And our faith is in Him, not in, not in ourselves. The love of Christ constraineth us. It's like he says in 1 John, we love him because he first loved us. He's the, the prime mover. The Bible says there in, first, uh, in verse 15, he died for all. The reason he died for all is he loves all. You know, we look around, you know, there's, some, there's some people harder to love than others, you know, for us. But you know, God loves us all. Whether we're saved or unsaved, God, God loves us. God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, he loves the whole world. And we all needed him to die for us. Uh, life is temporary. Uh, verse 16, I found a little bit difficult where he says, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we've known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. I think what he's saying there is life is temporary. It physically... Even Jesus was only here for a short while. 33 years, I think, is, is about what it was. And, you know, people you know and people that are important to you today, tomorrow they're gone. You know, nobody lives uh, forever in this body on this earth. And uh, we all needed him to die for us. He says in verse 14, then, then we're all dead. If one died for all, then we're all dead. We, we all needed uh, salvation. Someone has said the ground is level at the foot of the cross. You know, no matter how great a person is, uh, they're still going to die. No matter how poor and awful a person is, they're going to die and they need Christ, just, just like everyone else. In Galatians chapter 3 and, and verse 28, he, he puts it this way. There's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, the need of every person on this, this earth is the same. No matter what our, our situation, uh, His love is what ties us to Him. Uh, it ties us to each other. And it also ties us to the lost. You know, because of the love of Christ, uh, we reach out to, to lost people. In verse 17, this, this great and familiar verse, uh, He changes us. You know, he died for us. We needed Him to die for us. But He's the one who changes us. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you look in Ephesians chapter 2, let me just point out a couple of things here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Talking about the Lord changing us. Uh, he changes us by His great love. That's what, what He calls it there in Ephesians 2, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. See, by His great love, He changes us. He quickens us, gives us life. Uh, by His gift, He changes us. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. He changes us. Uh, verse 10, by His workmanship, He changes us. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works 
which God hath before ordained that we should, we should walk in them. Uh, Christ's love for us, it should be a constant motivation for us to, to serve the Lord. And he doesn't change us so that we can continue as we were. Now, I know some people who they, they consider Christianity, but they don't want to change. Uh, they want to tack it onto their life. Listen, uh, trusting Christ is life-changing. Uh, there in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 15, are, are you back there? 2 Corinthians 5, 15, that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. He does it, he, he changes us so that we can live for him. That's why he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things should become new. Now, we still have our individuality. And we're still individuals. And we'll serve the Lord in different ways and different amounts and, and, and so on. But He changes us and, and makes us able and uh, helps us to be able to, uh, to continue, to not faint and to be motivated to, to trust Him and follow Him. Now, I would encourage you to think more about heaven than you do. <laughs> You know, have a confidence of heaven and what, what God has done and, and is doing. Uh, don't love the world. You know, don't just admire the world and, and think that the world can, can meet your needs. Be confident of heaven. It'll help you to be uh, confident of what God is, is able to do. And uh, let me encourage you in this. I think many of us struggle to, to love the Lord. And I, I think the problem is we start at the wrong end. You know, it's, I want to love God. I want to love God. Now look at verse 14 there. He says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Uh, we need to receive God's love rather than look so much at our love for Him. Uh, the Bible says we love Him because He first loved us. Our concentration, I think, needs to be on Him. And as, as you'll receive God's love, then you'll be able to reflect God's love. It's not a matter of works, it's a matter of faith. And if you're saved, the Bible says you're going to see the Lord. You can have a confidence of heaven. Uh, you don't have to faint, you can, you can serve Him. Uh, you know, no matter what's happening in this life, uh, you can have that confidence. But as well, if you're saved, you're going to give an account to the Lord. And that account has to do with our rewards. And I think it's going to be a lot more important to us than we realize the rewards in heaven. Uh, I don't know. Some people talk about you know, how the Bible says he's going to wipe away all tears. Some people say it's going to be tears because we haven't served the Lord. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just the tears of, of this earth. But we can be confident. We can know if we're saved, we're going to give an account to him. But you know, most of all, uh, if you're saved, you can know this, you're loved by Him. You don't have to worry about God's constancy. Uh, he has said He loves you. He's shown He loves you. Uh, he's proved it. And uh, we need to understand, we need to live, live by faith. Now, like I said, this is not a, a, an easy chapter, but uh, you know, as Paul was living his life, uh, it would have been easy for him to have concentrated on the physical trouble he was going through. But instead, he chose to, to concentrate on heaven, his confidence of heaven. He, he chose to, uh, to uh, uh, concentrate on the fact that he could serve the Lord in, in whatever situation he was in. He didn't have to faint. He could, he could be motivated. And he could know that, that the Lord loved him by what he'd done on the cross in Jesus Christ. And therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are, are become new. Next week, we'll talk about the, the last area. But I, I thought we'd end this evening with uh, page 405 in our songbooks. It's just like his great love. Uh, I think that'll be an encouragement to us. Page 405. Let's, let's sing that. <laughs>